Well, there's always one dentist that doesn't recommend the toothpaste, and I guess one judge just gave that fight to Romero. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the 11th Island, everybody. I'm Brad. That's Chris over there. And Phil Davis just finished dominating Yo Romero in everybody's mind except for the one judge that is one of the only three people on earth that matters. So, Chris, <laughs> what are we thinking about this fight? Well, I mean, I can see the first round, maybe, maybe like off those leg kicks. The second round, no. And the third round, I mean that's the one that's the one that guy you you got to give that to Davis right you know that guy he's reasonable you know that's it's really that second round I think is in question and I'm going to I'm going to have to watch it again but yeah that that was a bad look there from the judge yeah I mean I think to like, I think the judges that was just a complete it was every round was more likely in my mind to be a 10-8 for Phil Davis than a 10-9 for Yo Romero that judge needs to be fired tomorrow but Phil Davis coming out here after losing the first round of the Grand Prix to Nemkov to get the title back too. I mean, the worst way to, to, to have the start of that Grand Prix, losing not only the first round, but you're losing the title shot too, comes in here against Romero. People are not talking about Davis at all. All they're talking about is Joel Romero's debut in Bellator, how important it is. Dominates him. Mm -hmm. Just absolutely do a, on the feet. And then at the end of the second round, kind of started testing the wrestling. John McCarthy kept talking about the wrestling, tested the wrestling when it was safe to do so, coming into the end of that second round, and then just dominated him throughout the entire third round wrestling. I believe that by the end of it, they said he had five different takedowns, mm -hmm. right? It was, we're not used to seeing Yo Romero be out-wrestled. Yo Romero is one of the, the best wrestlers in all of MMA, and Phil Davis just put it on him. And people are going to say, well, Romero is a, is a former middleweight. Romero filled out very, very well. He, looked, he that that was honestly in terms of just look going into the mm -hmm. octagon, probably one of the healthiest fights I've seen or looks from Romero I've seen. I mean, he wasn't very active, but we'll get to that in a second. But first, I mean, to toot your horn here, first round with four about a minute left, you were saying if I'm Davis, I'm gonna shoot here and just test things out. I can't get hurt too bad. I have time to back out if I'm like, whoa, this matchup is not good. Because it's really a question of how the wrestling matches up. Because their styles are just so different, these two guys. And they're both so elite. And they just haven't, mm -hmm. like, we just haven't seen that yet. So then for both of them, it's kind of like, I kind of want to shoot when I have a chance to back out of the bell in order to really feel out. And Davis kind of had that advantage in the first round depending on how you swing it depending on we're not going to get into any more judging because we could spend we could spend hours check out our old video our mma judges on drugs for the book on that but you know it, it's nice nice to see that you know he in the second round he actually took your advice did it with 40 seconds left said wow i guess i could just grapple this guy the entire third round Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, my services are available for hire for any uh, new MMA fighters. But in all reality here, like F Phil Davis, he, he did exactly what he needed to do. I mean, for a show, this Phil Davis has fought in the UFC. He's won Bellator gold. But in a weird way, this was almost a showcase for him. Because Romero is such a household name. And, and Phil Davis did, he start to finish here. From the 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 pre-fight kind of interview, through the entire fight into that beautiful beautiful post-fight interview, he did everything here right. Yeah, I, I mean that post-fight interview makes me cry, and that and that's how you know sometimes you watch a fight and a guy will will give a a, a statement like or statements like that, just say some beautiful words. You know, the one mm -hmm. thing that I loved. I, or I love, it's a sad story, but he, it really, he's like, I didn't encourage my friend enough when he was dealing with cancer. I didn't encourage him enough. I failed to encourage him. It's not even, I didn't do enough. I failed to, like, to do it. He made it sound like he didn't do it at all. When we know, knowing Phil Davis, great guy, it wasn't the case. He just feels like he didn't do enough. And now I have a chance to turn this around. You know, mm -hmm. that's... It, it, those beautiful moments is why I love this sport because as we saw tonight with Anthony Smith going the other way and get things getting just the, the emotions of a fight that just 
what you put into a camp going into the event and finally coming out on top, it just creates space for some of the most profound things. But now, mm -hmm. I mean, to, to back into the fight, the striking from Phil Davis. We, I mean, the, the wrestling is going to leave that aftertaste in our mouth, but let's talk about some of the striking. What do you think there? Yeah, the striking from Phil Davis was, he was much more technical. Like, the, Phil Davis has a lot of power. He's a lot more technical. Yo Romero was just winging shots all night. It was very reminiscent of the Adesanya fight, except for Adesanya really stayed back, kept the distance, and didn't engage Romero. It played mm -hmm. it ultra safe, where Phil Davis had no intentions of playing it safe and kept coming in at, at, at Romero, which kind of forced some activity. So... I, I, I liked it from Davis. I liked seeing how, how that technical, how he was able to really put it on Romero. And again, it shows that even at what he's 45, he's got a chin. There's a lot of shots he took from Davis that would have knocked out mo most light heavyweights. Mm -hmm. But Romero just, there was no point where he would put anything together that was not just a, he looked like somebody brand new playing UFC 4 just hitting power move every single time they try to throw a punch. That, that's probably your best analogy on this show. That's great. And, and I think the comparison to the Adesanya fight, I mean, it's, it's an easy one to make, A, because of the first 30 seconds of the round. It's also the last time we've seen Yoel Romero. So it's, it's really the Romero. Now this is starting to become a trend where it's just mm -hmm. the, he's a very cautious person to, to, if we're going to put a word on it especially getting out of the gate. And I think the issue was, I mean, first of all, I thought he won that fight against Adesai. I'll go to my grave saying he won that fight off the points. But anyways, yes. forget about that. Uh, I mean, he thought it was a five-round fight. And and that's what I got the sense of when I, I said, you know, ah, man, you can't be doing this when it's three rounds. I, this guy's fighting like it's five rounds. I don't, and in my mind, it was just like muscle memory and just his strategy. Just he's fought in so many main events in UFC leading up into this. That that's what he knows, and that's what he's gonna go in. And he's kind of like, oh, second round, he's like, oh, um, I gotta, I gotta start being more active because there's only two more rounds left. No, he just didn't know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it felt like a bad boxing event where you had one judge really skewing the votes for the to, for the favorite. You had the the one of the fighters thinking there was more rounds. I mean, just clean it up. Like, how do you not know? And like, you sign the just it truly, in all honesty, just unacceptable behavior from a fighter. You need to know how many rounds there are in the fight. It's either three or five. You should know it. There's no excuse for anybody. Mm -hmm. It's complete failure on him and the team, especially if truly, like you said, and like it visually seemed that his strategy was set up for a five-round fight. Yeah, because because it's, part, it's embarrassing. Part of me was kind of like when the when the commentators were saying, "Oh, this is a fight." He was kind of, they were kind of goofing on him for it, and you you caught on to it first. I was looking setting this stuff up, and you caught on to it. But I, was, I saw him. He was kind of like, "Oh, silly me," and I thought it was kind of a, "Oh, I'm just gonna play it off like there's a reason I just got really beat bad." But then mm -hmm. I think back to the first few rounds, and it's like, no, that that story plays out. Yeah, and I mean, what do we what do we do next? I think so. F give the respect to Phil Davis. What 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 do we do next with Phil Davis here? Because the light heavyweight Grand Prix is still going on. There's still mm -hmm. going to be two rounds to go, so we're he's not going to sit on the shelf for a while. I think the question is, do do rumbles out of the Grand Prix now? Do you give Phil Davis? to rumble to mm. rumble johnson or do you save him for yo romero i i i mean the thing with R rumble i think it's a better matchup it makes the matchup for me makes more sense with yoel but i think if you mm. want to continue on this we're really going to build phil davis into a bigger star than he already is a big win over rumble johnson goes a long way yeah, and I think that's a situation where I think if you're Bellator, you're looking at Phil Davis is 36 years old, and he has reached the pinnacle. So I think it's, can we make a bigger star out of him? Sure. But I think that they're going to look for the, the the fight that they already fumbled at once with uh, Yoel and Rumble, with Yoel having to pull out because of injury. I think they make that fight. They cash out. And with Phil Davis, I would like to see Rumble. I think competitively, that's the better fight. 
money wise is going to win over and we're going to see yo and rumble i would say maybe like when one of these the semifinals one of the guys that loses like if Corey anderson or ryan bader whoever loses that fight give phil davis one of them it's a name it's still a big name up there still competitive and at that point the winner of that fight probably goes in line for the next title shot as well yeah i think that's a good way of summing up now as i start the music as I oh, we're wrapping it. up. Yep. There's nothing else. Oh, we are yeah. running out of time. That's yeah, what you, Chris you Tell famous. us where to go. That's why I was going like this. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Uh, make sure to check out our other immediate reactions. We talked about the Anthony Smith Ryan Span fight earlier. Sports card playlist for 350 subscriber giveaway. Peace. Goodbye.